Hello, this is Crystal with the Willing Vessel podcast. Thank you so much for coming in and listening to me today. This is the week of Thanksgiving, so um, I have been super busy trying to make sure that I get everything done for my family to come in, but it's a it's a happy busy. Um, I look forward to all the cooking and all that, but I mostly am looking forward to spending time with my sister, my ki- my boys, and um, my nephews. It's been a while since we've all been together, and we're going to be, it's, we're a, a little loud and crazy bunch with all of our boys, but it's going to be good, and we'll see if my furniture and walls stay intact, but you get our crazy boys together, you never really know, but it's going to be good, and now my grandsons get to add to the chaos a bit, so it, it is going to be a great time. So I hope y'all are all having, um, looking forward to some wonderful Thanksgiving plans. Um, it's not just about the turkey. It's about that family. And if you don't have family, you know, join one. Um, I know a lot of, it can be a little hesitant or scary. Um, and if you don't know, want to join somebody, invite somebody. So anyway, we've been talking about adoption here on the um, podcast. Last week, I shared my perspective as an adoptive mother. Um, So if you missed that episode, please go back and check that one out. In part one, we spoke of Moses and how his mother put his needs before his own, and he went on to save um, the nation. So this week, we're going to talk about Esther and Mordecai. Esther was adopted by her cousin Mordecai. Um, the story of Esther is one of obedience and bravery that protects the Jewish people from annihilation. Esther listened to, listens to Mordecai and follows his instructions, even when those instructions place her in danger. She trusts God and she trusts Mordecai. The story focuses on Esther, and I mean the chapter is named for her. But let's look at Mordecai. Esther was his youngest co- younger cousin. When Mordecai's uncle, Abihel, hopefully I'm saying that right, died, he adopted Esther and raised her as his daughter. Even when Esther was taken into the harem of the king, Mordecai went to see her daily to ensure she was okay. He was a true father caring for his daughter. He looked out for Esther, um, gave her counsel and um, telling her not to speak of her Jewish heritage, to save, uh, to you know, protect her. Um, and Esther's beauty and grace led to her to being crowned queen. And Mordecai was given a position in the palace. This position led him to finding out a, a plot to assassinate King Xerxes. Hester was able to give Esther was able to give this information to the king and made sure that Mordecai was given credit for um, this information. Esther looked out for Mordecai as he had been looking out for her. Through his adoption of um, Esther, Mordecai had not just gained a daughter, but a position in the palace that set him on a path to save the life of the king. This brings him recognition and honor when Haman is plotting to have him killed. The Lord reverses those plans and Haman is put to death. Every plan that Haman had to destroy the Jews, Mordecai and Esther was used against him. Mordecai was honored in the way that Haman desired to be honored, and he was killed in the manner that he had planned to kill Mordecai. But only God could have given them this favor from King Xerxes. I love Esther's story. She is so brave and stands out in a culture that kept women hidden. But we cannot overlook Mordecai in this story, and quite honestly, I often have. But what would have become of Esther if Mordecai had not taken her in? Only God knows the answer to that. Um, but he w- it was her cousin. This wasn't a sibling for him to take in. This was a, a cousin, um, and we don't know the age difference or anything, but I don't, I'm sure that there was some he- hesitation um, of for Mordecai of taking in Esther, but he did it, and um, God used them both Esther and Mordecai to save the Jewish people. When we were first asked to adopt Jonathan, I was hesitant. 
not because I didn't care or want to be his mother, but because I was scared of getting hurt again. After our previous experience of taking in our nephews, I did not know if my heart could take the hurt of loving another child and losing them. I did not trust that I would actually get to keep him. I am so thankful that God softened my heart and gave me the faith needed to step out. I could not imagine my life without Jonathan now. There are times when I have wondered what would have happened if we had not adopted him. I am grateful that we have been able to bring him into our home and um, to protect and to nurture him. The blessing that Jonathan is to our family far outweighs any blessing we have been given to him. He is so kind and so good, even though life has not always been kind to him. I do not know all that God has in store for my boy, but I know that Jonathan has a destiny that is his alone to walk out. It is my honor that God has used my husband and I to raise Jonathan to know and love Jesus. And I hope, like Mordecai, um, we're able to give him wise counsel, as Mordecai did to Esther. I, think, I kind of think that Mordecai probably felt the same pride and honor in the role that God allowed him to play in Esther's life. Um, I, I mean, I would think looking back, he would be, be just in awe of what God had allowed him to do in saving his Jewish people. I, I would be. I am. I'm in awe of the things that God has allowed me to do and to, um, you know, the ability that he's given me to partner and uh, with adoption and having this child in my home and to love. And he, I just get to be a part of his life. And I'm just so honored by it. So is there something that God is calling you to do that is scary or maybe even painful? It's worth it to say yes. It may not be easy, but it will be worth it. I have never regretted a yes. I have only regretted my no's. Until next week, I pray that you have a wonderful, blessed Thanksgiving. And I pray that you say yes that what God, to what God calls you to and find joy in whatever steps God is walking you through. Happy Thanksgiving. See, see you next week.